Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Amy and this is Thrift Adventure. I'm a full-time reseller, primarily on the Poshmark app, but I do dabble on other online platforms and I sell locally. Today I'll be shipping out my sales from when I was gone to Phoenix for about a week. My sales were not great. Uh, I had high hopes for listing a bunch of stuff when I was on vacation. I had a whole bunch of pictures taken and it just didn't come to fruition. I only listed maybe five things and I worked uh, on, you know, on the websites very little while I was gone. I did do thrifting. So I had four sales on Poshmark and four sales on Cherish. I just got back into town, so I am going to share with you the four sales from Poshmark. And then when I come back on Monday, I'll uh, share the Cherish sales and any other sales that I have. So the first item that sold was a retail arbitrage item. So I've been experimenting with that a little bit. And I've got, it's back in the package, so I'm not gonna take it out because it was kind of a hassle, but I will insert a picture of it after the clip. It is from uh, Coach, and it is one of their le leather covered chain bag straps, and it was in rainbow colors. They had this marked way down to, I think it was like $76 plus tax, and it was originally like 300. So I paid about $84 for it, which in hindsight, I think was a little bit too much. But like I said, I'm experimenting a little bit. I bought two. This one sold for $140, which seems good. But after you take out the posh fees and my cost of goods, that only made my profit $28. Not a home run, but that's okay. I listed it only a couple of weeks ago, so it was a quick flip. And uh, that's part of learning and experimenting with different things is it doesn't always turn out great and sometimes it does. I might hold out on the second one that I have and wait for a little bit higher price, but I was interested in recouping some of my initial investment for that. So like I said, I will insert a picture of that here or over the top of this if I can figure it out. Okay, the next thing that sold was a bundle of two Roper shirts. So there's the brand name. This isn't something that I would normally pick up, but I was at a fill the bag sale and they had three of these in different colors, but in the same or very similar sizes. So I decided to get them because I thought uh, that it would make it an easy listing and I thought someone could, you know, bundle these. So the one of the three shirts sold relatively quickly on its own. I can't remember how much it sold for, but the pair of these two shirts sold for $50.00. At this particular fill the bag sale, it's $5 to fill a giant garbage bag. So I paid less than a dollar a piece for these. Here is the other, and these were both men's, and they, the two remaining ones were extra large tall. I think the other one was just an extra large. But I also thought that was a good size, and they had the pearl snaps and kind of the interesting um, you know, print on them. So it did take a little, they did take a while to sell. I think I, I may have bought these last summer. So it's possible they took close to a year to sell. But for that amount of investment, I don't think that's really that bad. So they sold for 50. I paid about $2. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $38. That's just fine. I, you know, I am happy to move these out and, you know, this person got a pretty good, pretty good price, I think, compared to what these would cost new. So the next item that sold is this really cute vintage wool Fair Isle cardigan sweater. I just really loved this with the buttons. Um, I used to do a lot better with these, but now they just kind of sit. And I've had this for quite a while, maybe 
again, maybe over a year or close to a year. So when I got this offer for $30, I just decided to go ahead and accept it. Looks like I need another piece of paper for this. Uh, because as I have said, I am making this summer the summer of sales. I am, am determined to not have a summer slowdown and also to clear out some of my older inventory. And so far, I just have not regretted accepting offers on some of these items that have been sitting around for a while. This was a pickup from uh, one of our local estates that does clothing for a dollar. So I still had a profit of $23 after posh fees and my cost of goods. And you know, we're coming into summer, so I don't want to be hanging on to wool sweaters through another summer. I apologize if I'm a little distracted. I caught some sort of bug in our travels back and forth to Phoenix and I'm just kind of worn out from the trip. Um, I, I did end up thrifting, end up getting quite a bit of stuff, but the first couple of days were terrible for thrifting, terrible. It was so disappointing. Um, but like I said, it I, I found some other areas and I'll tell you more about that when I do my thrift haul, which may in fact come out before this video. If it does, I'll try and remember to link it in the description box. Okay, uh, but I, I turned my closet off for the first day and then I turned it back on. So some of the, one of these sold four or five days ago, so I need to get them shipped out. Okay, the next item that sold is this new, new without tags, but it had the sticker, this little L.L. Bean vest. I also got this at a fill the bag type sale. This one isn't quite as cheap, but my average cost of goods for this haul was $1.50. And this sold for, I think for full price of $45. And that sticker kind of seen better days it's kind of come, coming off but this hasn't been worn so I was happy to uh, have this sell for $45 I actually got two of these also at that sale so I thought uh, it would make for an easier listing the first one sold for less I think for only about 30 uh, but after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $34.50 I think that's great and this wasn't listed a super long time. So I do have someone coming to look at a piece of furniture that they saw on Facebook Marketplace. So fingers crossed they buy that because that would be a really great uh, profit on that. And if they do, I will share a little video of that and how much it sold for. Okay, don't go anywhere. I will be back with more uh, shipping what else I sell. Sorry, I'm distracted. See you in a bit. Someone is coming in. They say they are buying this little credenza dry bar. As you can see here, uh, this little flap opens on each side to uh, make it into a dry bar. I think it's just a really cool piece. I have had this for a really long time. I think over two years. I had it listed on Facebook Marketplace for $4.25 and she offered me $3.50. It sounds like she's really serious, so fingers crossed she uh, buys it. I will let you know in the next clip if she gets it. Hi again, it is Monday and I have a whole bunch of sales to ship out. I'm really excited. I did a 20% off sale for every item in my closet with discounted shipping. I did that because I hadn't been very active on the app uh, listing or doing anything except for what my posher VA was doing for me. So I think I have maybe 14 or 15 items to ship out, which is really exciting. Some of them sold uh, because of the 20% off sale. Some of them were counter offers. Some of them are kind of low ball, I'll be honest, but there are some things I was just like, okay, take it. And then there's a couple full price sales. And whenever I do a... Um, 
a bulk discount like that, I always end up getting some full price sales. Oh, before I forget, the people did buy that little credenza dry bar. They paid $350 cash for it. I had paid $150 for it at an estate sale over two years ago, and I had had it listed for higher amounts, but when she made me that offer, I was ready to move it out. There were no website fees or anything like that, so that made my profit $200, which I think is great. They came, paid cash, picked it up, loaded it up. I have all that in my Facebook Marketplace li li listing, excuse me, um, that they have to move it and load it themselves. Uh, I apologize, I am still a little congested and sniffly. If I sneeze, I'll try and edit it out if I can figure it out, but just bear with me. You know, sometimes when you are self-employed, you just don't have time to be sick. Unfortunately, this is one of those times. Okay, so I sold a lot of jewelry. And like I have said, when I list a lot of a certain type of item, it seems like I sell a lot of that type of item. So some of these are items that I've recently listed. Some of them are items that have been listed for a while. So the first item that sold is from that giant $890 estate sale haul. And it is a pair of Carolyn Pollock earrings. And these are like a squash blossom style. And I can't remember what the stone was called, uh, but I looked it up and found what it was so that I could include that. This particular style seemed to be a popular style from her. And I'm wondering if this pink stone was a popular or more rare stone of hers because you'll see I sold another pink stone item from her. So these sold for $60. I paid $3 a piece for the jewelry from that estate sale. So exciting. This buyer asked for extra safe packaging. So I'm just going to add a little bit extra in there so these don't uh, move around. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $45. I can't remember what, I had these listed at 69 or 79 and the buyer offered me this 60. I thought that was reasonable for a little pair of earrings. So I said, yes, I will take it. Did I just say my profit was $45? You'll have to pardon me. I may be a little spacey, I guess. <laughs> being sick isn't uh, that good of an excuse because I tend to be a little <laughs> spacey and distracted sometimes anyways. Okay, so the next item that sold is this gorgeous uh, Art Deco style brooch. Actually, I think it is indeed from the 1940s or 1950s. It is sterling silver and it has rhinestones and uh, aquamarine glass in there. This was listed for a little while. It sold for $129. I'll let you have another look at that. And it is marked on the back. I don't think it'll zoom in, uh, but it does say sterling on the back. Interesting thing about this, I had it listed for $79 and I kept getting lowball offers. And so I increased the price to $129. It did take a little while to sell, maybe six months or so, but it ended up selling for full price. So sometimes, I've mentioned this before, sometimes I will do that if I have a little bit nicer item that seems to be getting lowball offers, I will increase the price and inevitably it sells for more than what I originally had it listed for. So that is something to think about. You know, that, that only works on you know, a vintage or, you know, rare piece. You can't necessarily do that with like a free people top or something like that, unless it's a, you know, rare piece. I had only paid $3 for this at an estate sale. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $100.20. I am really thrilled with that. That is an excellent profit. This next item is also a really great profit and I bought this from another dealer. I had been watching um, Jason Adams 
and he is a newer YouTuber, kind of a quirky fellow, but super kind and genuine, and he has so much knowledge about jewelry, you would not even believe it. Uh, so I have been watching his videos and he talks about how he, you know, has picked up pieces from antique stores and uh, antique shows from other dealers and that he finds some really valuable items. So sorry, this is kind of a long story, but I was all jazzed up to go to uh, a local antique store to see if I can find any goodies that those dealers had missed and I did. So. This is a sterling silver coin with um, a Native American black elk. And he is referred to as the, now I apologize, I feel terrible not doing it justice, but uh, the fifth person that should have been on Mount Rushmore. And so it has him on the front and then Mount Rushmore on the back. Let's see. And so the coin was sold individually and then someone put it in this not sterling silver setting. So this dealer didn't realize that the coin was sterling silver and collectible. He just thought that it was a costume jewelry piece. And he had it out for a little bit more, but he was motivated to make sales that day. So he said, if I bought a few pieces, he would make me a deal. And he sold me this for $5. I didn't know what it was when I bought it. I just knew that I thought it was real silver and that it was really unusual. And it felt really heavy and nice quality. So I picked it up. It ended up selling for 99. I did have it listed for higher than that, but again, I was motivated to accept, you know, offers to get my closet going. And I still think that that is a pretty fair price for this piece. So sold for 99, I paid five. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $74.20. I'm thrilled with that, especially because, you know, I hadn't been into an antique store shopping for quite some time. And just watching his videos really got me, you know, excited to do that. But he shares, you know, He'll just do show and tell about his collection, but then he also does educational videos that are super helpful. I have learned a lot from his videos. I am actually short on time today, which I forgot, so I need to quit <laughs> chit-chatting and get going. Uh, the next item that sold is this parrot necklace, and this is made out of ceramic and it is hand painted. I picked this up at the Goodwill. And when I saw it, I just thought that it was a unique artisan piece. So I gave it a little bit better look. And sure enough, it had uh, some markings and signatures on this. And this is marked uh, Candace Loheed, L-O-H-E-E-D. And Ruby Z is the brand. So I did a little bit more research when I was there in the Goodwill. They had it priced at $5.99, and I saw that this was a collectible artist, so I pick it, picked it up, and this has been listed a, a long time, uh, probably over a year, but it ended up selling for $79, which was the full price I had it uh, listed at. Like I said, I had paid uh, about $6 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $55.18. I'm gonna finish packaging this up off camera, but I wanted to get that little bird safely packaged. So like I said, my profit was $55.18, which I think is really great. And I'm happy to move that out. Okay, so this is another item from that $890 estate sale haul, and it is a Carolyn Pollock bracelet. It is that pink stone again, and it has a little sterling silver heart. This sold for $28. I did have this listed for a little bit more, and I sent out that 20% off offer, 
and the buyer counter offered me with $28. At first I was like, no, I'm not gonna take that. But then I decided to look up comps and this style of beaded stretch bracelet from Carolyn Pollock or, you know, QV QVC, that was in the range between $20 and $30. So seeing as I only paid $3 for each piece of jewelry that I got there, I decided to go ahead and accept that. So that made my profit $19.40 which is just fine. You know, I got so much of that jewelry, over 180 pieces that, um, you know, some of it I do need to turn and burn for sure. So I am going to be happy with my about uh, $20 profit on that and keep moving. Okay, the next item, not so exciting. It is a little Leah Sophia necklace with a cubic zirconia, really a pretty piece. Uh, but I picked up a few pieces of Leah Sophia in a large haul that I got. And I didn't really know what was in there when I bought it. And these did not prove to be very good pickups. So I would not recommend picking up Leah Sophia unless you know, you know, what pieces from that brand are more desirable. This sold for $13 with discounted shipping. I paid $3. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit a whopping $5.03. Not the kind of profit that I aim to have, uh, but sometimes, you know, things don't work out like you planned and I'm just happy to uh, move this out and, you know, get that money back to invest in something else that hopefully I can make a, a more substantial profit on. So as you see, lots and lots of jewelry sales and I think that is because I have primarily been listing jewelry over the last uh, few weeks because I'm trying to you know get it all listed from that big haul okay another item sold from that estate sale haul and it is this Patricia Nash wallet and this was new with tags it had the tag for $119 this I didn't actually even intentionally pick up. It was in one of the purses that I bought. And I don't know if the estate sale company meant to leave it in there because it matched the purse or if they overlooked it. Uh, but it sold for $71 with discounted shipping, which was one of the 20% off offers that I sent. So my cost of goods for this is technically zero. Uh, because I'm going to, just for the sake of record keeping, I'm just going to keep my cost of goods at $15 a piece on the bags because uh, that that's what it was. Okay, so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $54.78. I'm thrilled with that. And that sold somewhat quickly within maybe three weeks to a month or so. The next uh, item that sold is a bundle of three items and there are two pieces of jewelry, uh, a sterling silver necklace with um, a snowflake on it. Whoa, <laughs> that was hard for me to remember what that was. And then a pair of earrings that also have snowflakes on them, but are not sterling silver. Both of these pieces of jewelry were mine. I cleaned out my jewelry box a little while ago and got rid of things that I wasn't gonna wear anymore. And this was one of the items or a couple of the items. So these are just silver tone with cubic zirconia in them, let's see. 
So the bundle sold for $85. And they also got this cute Orvis jacket that if you guys are regular viewers, you've actually probably seen me borrow it and wear it for a couple of my videos. So that is this little jacket and I absolutely loved it and really wanted to keep it, but I had had it listed and hanging up here for a few months through winter. And really the only time that I felt inclined to wear it was in a video. It was just a little bit on the longer side and uh, then I, I normally reach for. So I had, I had marked it not for sale at one point because I thought about uh, keeping it. Let's see, I just saw a hair on there. So I wanna check and make sure that there isn't any other hairs on there. Okay, but then I decided, um, you know, that I just wasn't realistically going to wear it. And I have a Pendleton, a genuine wool Pendleton jacket that is similar colors that I absolutely love, but I don't reach for that either. So I decided I was going to keep that Pendleton one in my collection just because I cannot bear to get rid of it right now. Uh, but this one, I just realized that I probably wasn't going to wear. Okay, so the bundle sold for $85. I paid $13 for this Orbis little jacket because I thought I might keep it. Both of the pieces of jewelry were mine. So my cost of zero, my cost of goods was zero on that. Uh, so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $55, which I'm happy with, and I hope that buyer really loves it. So the next item that sold is this tan woven leather belt. I have a few belt sales, which I am happy with because when I was in Phoenix and the first few days, I was not finding anything, but I was finding belts. So I bought... I don't even know how many belts, probably at least 20 belts. So out with the old, in with the new, and of course I will share those belts in a haul if, if I haven't already uh, filmed it and uploaded it. If I have, I will uh, link it in the description box below. I think I already said that in this video. This belt sold for $16. I paid a dollar for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $11.80. Let's see here, I've got my slips out of order. So the next item that sold is this black mock croc leather belt. And it does have a silver tone buckle, but it is really tarnished. Uh, this sold for $33. I decided to leave the buckle tarnished. I'm I'm not sure why, <laughs> but I did. Uh, and it still sold for $33. I think maybe I just felt like uh, it wasn't worth the time to polish it up. Like it wouldn't translate to it selling for a ton more. So that's why I just decided not to do it. I had paid $3 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $23.40. I'm happy with that. You know, this was a nice quality belt, but it did have some wear on it. So I thought that that was a pretty good price for that. Let's see, it looks like it might be out of some of the belt or the boxes that I, like I didn't make enough boxes for the items that I had. 
Okay, the next item is another black belt, but this is faux leather, not genuine leather. I still pick up faux leather if it is priced reasonable and it has a cool style because I do know that there are uh, plenty of people who would rather not wear a genuine items made from animals and that they would prefer to, you know, have a faux leather type item. So this sold for $20. I paid about $3 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $13. Wow, I'm getting a little tired out. This is a lot of items and I still haven't um, shared the church sales that I have, but I will do that. Okay, the next item that sold is this pair of Lucchese, I think that's how you say it, uh, cowboy boots, and these have exotic skin leather on the toe portion. I think this is alligator, I can't remember, I looked it up, but it's some sort of uh, reptile, and these are just gorgeous boots. They were pretty well worn. The soles were pretty worn. I'm going to package these up off camera. Uh, I had them I had them priced quite a bit higher. I think at like $269, uh, but I got this offer for $125 because of the wear, and I just decided I wanted to move them out. Um, I accepted the offer for $125. I had paid about $12 for these. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $88, which I think is wonderful. The next item that sold is this pair of Paul Green sneakers, and they have this little bit of metallic look to them. Now, Paul Green has a pretty high retail value or retail price, uh, but I have never been able to get really great prices recently. I used to, a few years ago, I used to be able to get good resale prices. Um, so this, this person got a good deal. They offered me 20, I took it. I originally bought these for myself, but then I just didn't like the way they fit. I had paid $5 for them. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $11. Not really great, but again, not something that I'm interested in hanging on to and waiting for a you know higher price for. Okay, I'm going to pause again and get my Cherish sales and be right back. Okay, so I had four sales on Cherish while I was on vacation. And interestingly enough, they were just from two different buyers. So two buyers bought, or one buyer bought two pieces and another buyer bought two pieces. Okay, so the first item that sold is this teak wood owl trivet. And... It sold for $65. $65. Can you believe that? This has been listed forever and a day, over over two years. Or no, maybe not. Maybe I've just had it a long time. I, You know what? No, I think I actually listed this in the last six to eight months. So still a long time. But it sold for $65. I paid a dollar for this at an estate sale. So after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $51.70. So as of the filming of this video, Cherish is still charging 22% fee. Uh, as of tomorrow, I think it is, they are increasing their standard seller fee to 30%. If you have less than 10 items, they charge 40%. You can pay a $49 subscription fee, I don't know what it is exactly, to get your uh, fee down to 22%. I am probably going to pay that because I sell enough to where I think that that would uh, make sense for me. I don't know if it's worth it for smaller sellers to, you know, keep selling on there or not, unless you're just willing to increase your prices and rate wait for the right buyer to come along. I did talk about that in a previous video, how I feel about that. Okay, the same buyer also bought this teak wood trivet and uh, this is marked Celandia Designs. They paid $46 for this. Uh, I paid about $2 for this at a state sale. So after uh, 
fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $35.88, another great sale. And then the other buyer bought these two pieces of art glass. And the first one is this turquoise blue colored uh, art glass, originally meant to be an ashtray, but I sell these as decorative trinket dishes all the time for great prices. This one sold for $169. You could probably find these in antique stores. I got this at a small town, very small town antique store for $8. So after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $128.82. Oh, if you are interested in selling on Cherish, I have the Cherish Seller's Guide linked in the description box below, and it tells you everything you could want to know about selling on there. I highly recommend that you read that before you list or make any decisions. Okay, and then they also bought this more of a cobalt blue art glass dish. This is really pretty. Uh, it's not really coming across as pretty as it is on uh, camera here. And it has these little controlled bubbles in there and that's called, I'm not sure if I pronounce it right, but Bulacante. And they both had those. This one, I can't remember if I attributed it to um, or made in Murano or not. This one was by uh, Kreis or Kreis, K-R-E-I-S-S. -S, and I had another one just like this in a different color that had the original sticker on it so that I knew that that was the brand. This bowl sold for $149. I had paid $5 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $116.22. Whew, what, what a excellent couple of days since I, uh, you know, was on vacation and then came back. I'm super excited uh, to have kind of generated these sales to make up for the money that I uh, spent while I was gone. Okay, don't go anywhere. I will be back in a day or two to share what else I sell. Hopefully it stays this busy. We shall see. Hey again, it's Wednesday and I've got a few more uh, sales to ship out. Not quite as busy as it was uh, when I sent out all those offers, but I'm still happy with uh, my sales. The first item is this really fun anklet with little uh, dangly ball charms on this and this was part of my $890 thrift haul again. I am really selling through those items quicker than I expected and uh, one of you, a subscriber, Christine, you bought this for one of your friends and I just want to say thank you so much for shopping with me and more importantly, thank you so much for all of your support and kindness uh, in the comments on my videos. You have just been so sweet and wonderful uh, and I really appreciate you and all of you who are so kind to me on YouTube. It just means so much and it really keeps me going. Okay, so uh, she bought this for $45. This was um, Mylor. I don't know if that's the brand or the place in Italy, uh, but if you see a sterling silver or a gold item stamped Mylor, that brand is more desirable and collectible, so it can make the price uh, higher, the resale price is higher. So keep your eyes out for this. She paid $45. Uh, this was one of the items that I got for $3 a piece. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $33. I'm absolutely thrilled with that. And uh, still can't believe that I got all of that stuff at, at an estate sale and that it has been uh, selling through pretty quickly. Although I do still have, of course, I still have a ton left. Um, but you guys just mean so much to me. And I just doing this, you know, these videos, it just wouldn't be the same without all of your kindness. It just, I really have been blown away by how kind everyone has been and you know i rarely get a not nice comment and sometimes you know i get feedback which i always try and be open to um but you know i'm just a person and sometimes i get a little sensitive and uh, i don't take feedback as uh, easily as i should but anyways i just you know i just 
want you guys all to know how much, so much I appreciate you. Okay, so the next sale is a pretty exciting sale. This is a pair of somewhat vintage Jimmy Choo sandals. And they have this fun uh, lining on the footbed, strappy. And uh, these came out at my Goodwill and they missed them. There was a pair of Jimmy Choo's and I can't remember if the other one was Prada or um, Manolo Blahnik. Uh, but they had missed that these were designer and they had them priced at five and six dollars. I think I'm going to package these up off camera and add some extra uh, padding to them. Uh, these did take a little bit to sell, but they sold for $194, and this pair was $5. You know, they just look kind of like an unassuming uh, pair of shoes if you aren't familiar with those high-end designer brands, and fortunately for me, uh, on that day, it was a new employee, and they were not familiar so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $150.20. I'm thrilled with that. I have to say after my shopping trip in Phoenix, which I will share more in my haul video, uh, it really kind of humbled me and uh, made me understand more of what you guys talk about, saying your Goodwills don't have as good a stuff as mine because um, it just, the Goodwills in Phoenix were really disappointing. I did find some other thrift stores that, uh, that were pretty good, but, uh, I was like, oh, okay, now I really see what you are saying about your Goodwills. Okay, so the next item that sold is a pair of Eileen Fisher linen pants. And these were, uh, I got these at an estate sale and I got quite a few pieces of linen Eileen Fisher items. And these sold well and quickly for me. I don't always do super well with Eileen Fisher, uh, but I was really happy with this purchase. Uh, this sold for $38. There's only one piece left from that the purchases I made at that estate sale. And it's a linen top, but it's not Eileen Fisher. So I paid $5 uh, for this pair of pants. Did I say they sold for 38? Uh, after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $25.40. I think that's great for a pair of pants, especially because I don't always do super well with Eileen Fisher. I think maybe I price it too high I, or maybe I'm not picking up the right things, but these were also um, multiple of the items that I got were still available like on the Eileen Fisher website, Nordstrom, uh, Neiman Marcus. So it was a pretty current piece, although they were marked down. So maybe that had something to do with it. The next item that sold is this vintage military bomber jacket in nylon. And I did have higher hopes for this, but I, um, you know, I'm still going with my summer of sales motto. And this had been listed for, I think six or eight months. And I got an offer for $42. Well, first this person offered me 30 and I think I had it listed for $89. Uh, but they, you could see in the offer history that they had gotten multiple offers up to 30% off. And, you know, they knew that this had been listed a while. It also had quite a few condition issues with a heavy pilling and uh, spots and wear. So... I just decided, oops, <laughs> sorry about that. I just decided to uh, accept the $42 because I had only paid $2 for this at a fill the bag type sale. And maybe this is something, maybe this is the type of item that would have sold better on eBay. And I really wish that I had the 
bandwidth or energy or whatever you want to call it to uh, cross list to eBay. But to be honest, I am almost overwhelmed with uh, what I'm doing right now with, you know, selling on Poshmark and Cherish and Facebook Marketplace and YouTube and then locally. It just, you know, it's just, it's a lot to manage. And I don't know if um, the extra money that I could potentially get on eBay is worth the stress for me. So that is one thing that is very important to me in my career being self-employed is that I, I manage my stress and that I live a, you know, happy life. And I think that that is more valuable than money. So that's why a lot of people, I'm just really fumbling with this. I'm still feeling under the weather. Uh, but what, a lot of people ask me why I don't sell on eBay. And uh, that's why I, right now, that's why I do, I do realize that I'm missing out on a lot of buyers and potentially higher prices even. Uh, but I am a creature of habit and I like you know, kind of knowing what to expect and the ease of Poshmark shipping and uh, limited returns, knock on wood. Um, but let me know in the comments down below if you guys value, you know, your stress and your time more than you value money. It's really some a goal uh, that I've had since my mom passed away. And when I left my full-time career in banking, if you haven't watched my About Me video, I was uh, in banking for 15 years before I started being a full-time reseller, and I was a branch manager for five years. Uh, I got promoted when I was very young uh, to, at 24, I got promoted to uh, be a branch manager. So anyways, uh, that's just something that's really important to me. My health suffered because of uh, that stress and the pressure from the sales goals. And I was 60 pounds overweight and um, my marriage suffered. So it's just really important to me to uh, live a good, happy life. And that's more important than money. Okay, so did I say I sold that for $42, I paid about $2, so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $31.60. I'm just fine with that. I have really, I'm really enjoying this summer of sales goal that I've had. Uh, I really haven't re regretted selling anything yet, so fingers crossed I can keep with this and keep uh, moving through some inventory. So I will be back in a couple of days, my time, in a jiffy, your time, don't go anywhere. Hey again, it is Saturday and it has been a dismal few days. I have one sale on Poshmark and one sale on Cherish. So thank goodness the earlier part of the week was really good. Uh, otherwise this would have turned out to be a terrible week. Okay, so I'll share first uh, what I sold on Cherish, and I actually had these listed on both uh, Cherish and Poshmark, and they sold on Cherish for $89 plus a $5 packaging fee, and they are these retro fun deer statues. They are actually made out of plastic. And I just thought they were really fun and funky. As you can see, one of them was missing an eye. Actually, I need to make sure that I put that in the listing. I think that I did. Uh, but uh, like I said, they sold for $89 plus a $5 packaging fee for a total of $94. I paid $3 a piece for these, so a total of $6 after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods. That made my profit $68.42. I did end up uh, paying the monthly seller's fee subscription, I don't know what you want to call it, for $49 on Cherish. And so that reduces my uh, fee from 30% to 22%. I did some math and I looked at my sales over the last couple of years on Cherish to see what I averaged. And um, it looks like if I sell more than $1,000 a month on Cherish, it is going to be worth it to 
for me to pay the $49 a month to reduce my fee. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to look into, so they do allow some sellers to sell jewelry on Cherish. And as you guys know, I have a ton of jewelry. You do have to apply to be a jewelry seller on Cherish. So I'm going to do that because if I'm going to pay that fee, then I want to have as many listings as and as many um, possible items to sell on there to make up for that additional fee. Okay, so did I say my profit was $68.42? Uh, you know, I've just decided that I am going to celebrate Cherish for the good things instead of focusing on the bad things and try and make the best of it. Okay, and then my sale on Poshmark was not very good. Also, I had a case opened today on Poshmark and I'll tell you a little bit about that after I share this. So this is just a pair of Adidas warm-up track pants they are the arrow ready style i picked these up at a fill the bag sale just to you know increase the number of items that i got in order to bring my average cost of goods down as low as possible they sold for 15 dollars. i paid about a dollar for them so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $8.98. Not great, but you know, I'm kind of on the fence about how I'm going to do fill the bag sales in the future. Do I really want that many more low profit items to bring my average cost of goods down and cause me more work? I don't think so, <laughs> especially with the amount of inventory that I already have, the death pile, money pile, whatever you want to call it that I already have. Uh, I don't think that I want to be grabbing items that I'm going to profit $9 on. I am not saying that People shouldn't do that if that is the type of inventory that they have access to, if they want to, you know, turn and burn lots of items to make the profit. Do your business how it works well for you. I am just trying to look at my business and how I work. I would rather buy more stuff than list more stuff. So I am not going to be motivated to list these items that I'm making $9 on when I have items that I could be making, say, $60, $100 on. I really should be taking the time to list those instead of these lower dollar items. Okay, so I'll share my total sales for the week and then I'll talk a little bit about this case. And you want to listen uh, because I'm going to try something out for you guys and for me to see how it how it affects my sales. Okay, so my total sales that I shared in this video, so this is for more than a week because this includes um, the sales that I had when I was on vacation. My total sales were $2,290. I'm thrilled with that. Even if it's for two weeks when I was on vacation, one of them, I'm thrilled with that. My total uh, cost of goods was $338.50. My total profit was $1,559.71, and that is after I take out any website fees, my cost of goods, and any shipping discounts. Okay, so for the case, I uh, don't like the reason that the buyer is stating that they want to return the item. It was the, I think it actually sold in this video. So it was the silver coin pendant with the large um, Native American coin in it. So she got it, she took the coin out of the pendant and then claimed that there was damage around the edge of the pin or uh, around the edge of the coin and that she was buying it for the coin and she didn't like the condition of the coin, so she wanted to return it. Okay, so I see both sides of this to some extent. I don't like that she altered the item that I sent her and took it apart. I don't, I don't think that she should be able to return it after she takes it apart. But I also see that she wants to examine the coin to some extent, but if she was buying it for just the coin, 
I think she should have inquired and said, what's the, co I'm buying it just for the coin. What's the condition of the edges of the coin? Uh, because I'm selling it as a necklace, as a piece of jewelry, not as a collectible coin. And condition matters. It's a lot different for a collectible coin than it is for a piece of jewelry for condition. Uh, and she is a uh, level two posh ambassador. So I feel like she should know that she should ask questions if she is buying something for another purpose than she's using it. Okay, so that is my take on it. I don't really wanna accept this return, but I'm going to. I'm going to, in the comments, say uh, I will accept the return. The reason that I'm doing this is because I want to see if, so when Posh approves a return, they put a reason why they approve the return. So item damaged, item not as described, seller accepts return. So I wanna see if they put uh, as the reason seller accepts return, if it affects my sales differently, less, more, how it works. Because uh, you guys who watch regularly saw that last time I had a return, it uh, really made my sales tank for the week afterwards. So uh, it isn't, the sales price was $99. So it is a higher dollar item. But if she does return it in the condition that it was sent, which I did say in my response to the case, I said, I will accept this return if she returns the item in the condition that I sent it with the coin set in the pendant like I sent it. Um, I, I do think I'll be able to resell that pendant, maybe for more, maybe for less, but I do think that I will be able to resell it. So it's not a total loss and hopefully it'll be a learning experience for all of us to see, uh, you know, how that works. Now, I do realize that like statistically or whatever you wanna say this, this isn't apples to apples because who knows what I did uh, work-wise the week before that previous return and if something from that made my sales slow or if I listed more this last week and so my sales would have been fine. It's just, you know, it's just a an experiment but not really a, you know, it's just an idea. We're not gonna know for sure. We'll say it's for entertainment purposes. Everything I say in these videos are for entertainment purposes. I'm not an expert and I just share uh, these things to try and help you and help you learn from my potential mistakes. Okay, so I will report back. You'll see next week if my sales are good or not. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. If you ring the bell, it'll notify you when I upload new videos and you don't wanna miss any of my new videos because I always have uh, you know, interesting and unique items and I should have some fun thrift hauls and thrift with me's coming out. Also, if you could give this video a thumbs up, that tells YouTube that people like my videos. And so YouTube suggests my videos to more people and it helps my channel grow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you guys all next week.